thank you very much for speaking to us today. We're looking forward to having you at the festival. And um, you'll be speaking about the East India Company this year and your book, uh, The Anarchy, that tells the story of their relentless rise. Um, what was it that drew you to write about that topic? There's two things, really. One is that the whole issue of British colonialism is something which bizarrely no longer features on any uh, curriculum. Uh, everyone that grows up in this country, even if they do uh, history up to A level, can uh, can get to that level and never actually come, come across the business of the British conquest of India, which was the thing which catapulted Britain single-handedly from somewhere in the middle rank of Europe to the front. Uh, and indeed to, to be eventually the greatest economy in the world in the mid 19th century. So it's it's a massive and vital piece of, uh, of British history, which is just forgotten uh, and ignored. And specifically, it's, it's the nature of the early British colonialism in India that I'm interested in, which is the East India Company, which was a company. Uh, I mean, it's it, you know, it's it's a very obvious point, but it's a surprising one because uh, it was not the British government who conquered India. It didn't happen out of the Foreign Office. It didn't happen out of Downing Street. It wasn't the British Army, uh, although there were occasional uh, appearances in the British Army and occasional appearances in the British Navy. But it was a corporation like Facebook or Google or um, Amazon, uh, but a corporation with an army. And in this time when we have uh, fears about, you know, growing corporate power with Elon Musk and Facebook and, uh, and the, you know, corporations sending moon rockets now to uh, uh, into space and so on. Uh, and with all of them harvesting our data and listening to our conversation so that, you know, anyone that listens to this may well have a, an advert for East India Company tea turning up on their, uh, on their Facebook feed tomorrow. So this sort of feeds into all of that. So it's two stories. It's the story of colonialism, which is a lot darker, I think, than many people, uh, British people realise. Uh, it's a story uh, that we often like to dress up with merchant ivory films with, you know, beautiful ladies in crinoline dresses and parasols sweeping over the lawns of the Bangalore Club or similar croquet fields with swishing elephants and, uh, and Maharajas playing croquet and forgetting that, in fact, of course, like any empire anywhere in the world at any point in history, it was primarily exploitative. It existed for the benefit of the coloniser and, and hugely enriched us. And uh, in the course of history, uh, England, which originally at the time of the founding of the East India Company had about 3% of world GDP, uh, while the Mughal Empire had about 40% of world GDP. Uh, in the course of colonialism, those figures were more or less reversed. Uh, and Britain ended up with, with you know, a great chunk, a, a third of world uh, produce, and, and India was reduced to single figures. But the second thing is also this looking at a, at a massive corporation, a massive armed corporation, because the East India Company is quite simply uh, the most stark warning in history about the powers of a great corporation. No, it's, it's fascinating. It's really interesting. And it, it kind of leads us on to the second topic that you'll be talking about at the festival as well, about the history of Britain and Afghanistan um, from the first Afghan war to the present. Um, yeah, listen, I wasn't it... sure I was speaking about that, but how nice. You get to <laughs> send me the details of when and what I'm speaking about. I'm delighted to. <laughs> um, how important do you do you think it is to understand the history of um, the East India Company or, or Afghanistan um, in today's world um, with everything that's going on currently? Well, the great benefit of, uh, of learning history is that you tend not to repeat the errors of the past. And if only people had studied the history of Afghanistan a bit more, and particularly the history of British uh, attempts to control Afghanistan and the reaction of Afghans to Brits taking over Afghanistan, or indeed Americans or any other foreign power, uh, they would have learned more lessons. And, and, and you know, many people said when, uh, after 9-11, when Tony Blair took the uh, took the British army into Afghanistan. Many people said, if only he'd, he'd look at history, you could see this is not a good idea. This is not going to end well. And uh, when I wrote uh, Return of the King in 2006, I ended with the uh, the fact that it was clearly going to end in a, in a massive humiliation for the West, with the only potential gainer being China, which is likely to come in and swoop up the mineral results. 13 years later, that's exactly what happened. Uh, and, uh, and you know, you don't have to be a clairvoyant. Uh, you just have to study history. That's what history is there for. That's why uh, we study history. Uh, and if, if you like, it's a textbook example of why uh, it's important to study history, because it can teach you lessons and avoid you making the same mistakes that your predecessors made. 
yeah no it's it's so interesting and and history is a lot more present than a lot of us realize a lot of the time it's completely present yeah mm. so you've been to the festival before um what was one of your favorite things about your visit last time uh, i love the chalk valley history festival it's uh, it uh, is one of the great highlights of my summer i mean it's lovely anyway just to come down to the chalk valley even if there wasn't a festival there it's a, it's a pleasure in itself and, and and arriving down those hills through those woods uh, one always feels one's heart lightened but then when you suddenly find yourself in the middle of a civil war battle uh, or find lots of sort of bobbies from an agatha christie film cycling past uh, or even more when you find the uh, kind of nazi invasion of wiltshire taking place and find out that all the <laughs> nazi stormtroopers are actually met police on their weekend off when <laughs> all that happened. it certainly adds to the uh, uh to the sheer uh, uh, surprises of life and uh, no it's 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 a wonderful mixture uh, i love the uh, the serious lectures i love just hanging out in the chalk valley i love uh, the delicious foodie stalls i love meeting lots of friends uh, and i love all the bonkers recreations that go on and sort of all the uh, tank nerds and world war ii nuts and the sort of civil war of or wherever they are, all, all hanging out at the bar in their, whatever it is, their Nazi stormtrooper kit or their sort of Cromwellian steel helmets. It all works. It's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, no, it is fantastic. And we look forward to uh, to having you there. And I look forward to, to meeting you there potentially as well. So thank you very much for your time. It is much appreciated. Look forward appreciated. to that very much. Okay, great stuff. Bye-bye.